Hello everybody, I know you are all hotly anticipating the full movie version of the History of Mortal Kombat with the Mortal Kombat 11 bonus chapter. And don't worry, that's right around the corner. The MK Community event is on January 17th and we have to let that happen first so I have information to work with, because if there's no information to work with, I can't make a video. When I shot this video, the channel only had about 650 subscribers and there are quite a bit more of you now. So, I just want to let you know, if you subscribe for more History of Content documentaries, don't worry. There is more coming. I'm thinking February 2019, I'm going to reveal what the next History of is. And I can't wait to do so, because I think you'll all really enjoy it. This video is about my favorite band, Him, but more specifically, it's about my collection of all the things that I own of my favorite band, Him. Be it CDs, records, posters, autograph things, everything under the sun. I'm going to share my collection with you, just like I shared my Superman collection with you about a year ago, if you haven't checked that out. And I want to know in the comments, what are you passionate about? I know all of you guys collect stuff, and I'm going to read through all the comments, and I want to know what you collect, because that shit is just interesting to me. So, let's get to it. Alright, I figure CDs are probably a good place to start. So we will start off with the first hymn album, and I'll hold them at an angle like this, so you don't have to see my stupid face looking at you the whole time as I do this commentary. But we've got... The first album, Greatest Love Songs, Volume 666. And then there's the deluxe reissued version, which I have kept this one sealed because I have so many copies of this album, I don't really have a reason to open this one. And you can see this is only a piece of the Heartogram. I think it sits like this because, spoilers as we move on, uh, they put out a set where it was like the entire Heartogram would be built out with across the four albums, but. That's the deluxe version, still sealed. And then it would only make sense to move on to Razorblade Romance, the second album, which came out in 1999. Guys, I keep these displayed, so some of these are gonna be kinda dusty. And for that I apologize, but we're just gonna have to deal with it, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> this is the deluxe reissued version of Razorblade Romance, which also came in this felt case that has the gold heartogram emblazoned on it. Emblazoned, is that the word? There's a, gonna be a couple cracks on these, you know what I mean? There's nothing I can do about it. A little less fancy and a little more fucked up is this version of Razorblade Romance. This is the Universal Jimmy Franks recording edition of the CD, which I have more than one copy of for some reason. This is the same fucking album. I don't know why I have so many copies of these. But I'd say this is probably one of the crown jewels of my collection. This is a completely genuine her edition of Razorblade Romance, and if you don't know the history behind this, back when Jimmy Pop of Jimmy Frank's Recording Company from the Bloodhound Gang, he brought, he basically allowed him to release their stuff in the States for the first time, and he did it under his label, but there was a band in Chicago called Him, and uh, our Finnish favorites didn't quite have the rights to the name, so they changed the name to Her, put out a couple copies of this, maybe like a thousand, three thousand, some shit like that. Eventually they got the rights to the name and then they re-released it the way we all know and love it. This is the CD single for Join Me, which I think I found at a Reckless Records in Chicago. I don't remember which one it was, but I got it for like five or six bucks, so I was happy with that. Deep Shadows Time, the third album, 2001. This is from the deluxe re-release edition, if I can get the fucking thing to come out of there. It doesn't want to come out right now, but you know what it is. It's the dual disker, regular tracks, bonus tracks, part of the four pieces of the heartogram. Here we've got the standard edition of the CD, Deep Shadows. Got a nice little CD single of Heartache Every Moment here. I think I got this at Reckless Records as well for like four or five bucks. I always like coming across something I don't have, because as this video goes on you'll be like, oh, he's got a lot of shit. So it's hard to find stuff I don't have, and this was one of them. So before we move on to the 2003 album Love Metal, I've got this Him the Single collection. This is a box full of the CD singles that had come out up to this point. Give you a rundown of the artworks real quick, why not? Enjoying Sorrow, Pretending, Limited Edition. <laughs> Heartache every moment close to the flame, you can tell these are kind of out of order. Here's the Join Me single cover, which is really fucking weird looking. The right here in my arms, which Bill always says that's his Michael Jackson look. Gone with the Sin. Poison Girl. Wicked Game, which is just a zoomed in version of the Greatest Love Songs artwork. When Love and Death Embrace, which is zoomed in of the Greatest Love Songs artwork, just moved up about a foot. <laughs> oh, there's some shit on there. 
and It's All Tears. 2003 gave us Love Metal. This is the deluxe 2CD version, which again I still have sealed because I really had absolutely no reason to open it, so what the fuck, I left it sealed. Standard edition of the Love Metal CD, Jimmy Frank's Universal. Now if you look really closely, this is a big regret of mine. Can you see the lines across the heartogram in there? There's like little etched lines. That's because when I was like 14, I took the booklet out of the CD. You can see a little better there, right there specifically. I took the booklet out of the CD and put paper over this and traced it because I wanted to have a perfect heartogram. And I, I fucking hate that I did that because this is the first copy of Love Metal I ever had and I fucked it up. Here we have a CD single of Buried Alive by Love, Volume 2. And Love Said No was a greatest hits collection that came out, I think the year after Love Metal, in 2004. It's 16 of him's greatest hits. And this, I kinda, it's kinda fucked up. Cause I have another copy of this one too, for some reason. This is what it's supposed to look like without the cracks and the gunk and everything. But guys, these are like, these are old at this point. Give me a break. Um, and if you take the cover out and flip it, that looks fucking scary. 2005 gave us Dark Light. This is the standard CD version. This is the CD single for Killing Loneliness. The track list consists of Killing Loneliness, obviously, Wings of a Butterfly Live, and Play Dead Live, which is pretty fucking rare. They did not do Play Dead Live too many times. This is a CD single for Wings of a Butterfly that I got at Hot Topic probably in 2005 which has just the song and then the making of the video. I think this one goes a little bit into rare territory. This is Uneasy Listening Volume 1. And for you guys that don't know what that is, it's a bunch of older hymn songs that these are remixed kind of into more like either string heavy or synth heavy, but softer versions of these songs. Like Buried Alive by Love is a pretty heavy rock song. This is, there's an acoustic version on here. Now what's rare about it is this artwork was eventually pulled because it belonged to an artist that didn't exactly license the rights for this to be used. I think I'm getting that story correct, but eventually they reissued this with different artwork, and that different artwork is actually never something that I picked up, so next time I see it I'll grab it. Uneasy Listening Volume 2. Same exact concept. Older hymn songs, some unreleased hymn songs like Rendezvous with Anus, which is a Turbo Negro cover. Um, but these are much heavier versions of songs where, and one of the highlights is track one, Buried Alive by Love, the 616 version. That was featured in a scene from CKY4. And for years and years, people wanted to know which version of the song that was and where to get it. It's this version. They finally gave it an official release. Until then, I think only fucking Bam had a copy of it. But now we all have a copy of it. This right here technically is not him, but it uh, you file it under him, <laughs> so I'm gonna count it. This is a string quartet tribute to him. This is actually fucking fantastic. If you guys have never heard this before, really good string versions, instrumental versions of a lot of great hymn songs, and track 12 is called Jim. 2007, Venus Doom. This is the standard CD version. You know what, I'm stacking all the shit I've already looked at over here and it's causing a, sh a shadow. But now that's ugly, you don't wanna see that shit in the background. I gotta move this. There we go, 2007 gave us Venus Doom, arguably him's heaviest album. Now this is that deluxe version of Venus Doom. I actually have those symbols tattooed on my left forearm? Yeah, left, not right. A lot of people don't understand what this is that we're looking at right here. These letters are all stacked on top of each other. So this says Venus, this says Doom, that's obviously a heartogram, that says Him, and that says Six, because this was Him's sixth studio album. They never used this logo, this Him logo, outside of right here. They eventually started using this vertical version of it, but that is the only time we ever saw this, which I think is pretty fucking cool. And there were some awesome bonus tracks on this version of the album, which we have right over here. Love and Cold Blood, the Special K remix. We have Dead Lover's Lane, the Special C616 remix. And you know what, that's about it. Here, we have a Kiss of Dawn CD single, which still has the sticker on it from my store where I work. <laughs> from, that is July 27th of 2012. Digital Versatile Doom. 
was a live CD and DVD combo pack that him put out in 2008, the year after Venus Doom. Screamworks, Love in Theory and Practice, Hymn's 2010 album. This is the deluxe version of the CD. And what's really cool is you've got the track list over here, the length, the key, and the beats per minute. Who the fuck had that idea? That's really cool. I've never seen that in any other album I've ever had. Pop it open. I love this artwork right here. Him was being quite poppy and colorful in the Screamworks era, and a lot of people are not a fan of that, but to that I say, fuck off. I love Screamworks. I adore Screamworks. I think some of their best songs are on this album, and I, that might be blasphemy for certain Him fans out there, but that's just my opinion. The deluxe edition of the Screamworks album came with this right here, which is Baudelaire in Braille, and what that means is this is the entire album again, but acoustically. Now this right here, you can't fucking read it. It means Screamworks remixes. <laughs> you can see the, the tape back there with the vertical logo, the hardogram out in the tape itself, shaped out. These are a bunch of remixes of songs that were on Screamworks. Uh, this is not my kind of music at all. I would, I've heard this album all the way through maybe once just to like experience it. I'll probably never listen to it again. It's not that it's shit. I mean, some of them are shit. But it's really just not my style, but as a hymn collector, you gotta have it, you know? XX, two decades of love metal. It was basically, imagine and Love Said No, which was the greatest hits we looked at earlier, but like 10 more years later. <laughs> so, this, the track list is actually, it's 20 of their best songs, because there was 20 years. Look at me in the, in the, in the reflection there. My, look at my nose, it looks so fucked up. Anyway, <laughs> that's why we're tilting. Uh, the brand new track was Strange World, which is a cover by an artist called K, which I never heard of before and have not heard of since. <laughs> but what's unfortunate is a lot of these songs are straight from In Love Said No. There's a couple new ones mixed in here and there, Heart Killer, Killing Loneliness, Bleed Well, yada yada. But, I mean, really, it's not, it's nothing too special. The artwork is cool, but could have been better. The final hymn album, Tears on Tape. This is the Digipack version of the CD. Now, guys, I own a couple versions of these hymn albums on a disgusting amount of formats, as you're gonna see. This is the regular Digipack version. Beautiful artwork on the inside from Daniel P. Carter of the Bloodhound Gang. This is the, I don't know what fucking version of the album this is. It's like the Digipack version, but it's like a hardcover book, in a way. Similar artwork on the inside, that's T.O.T. Tears on Tape, right there. Some more beautiful artwork from the talented Daniel P. Carter. And this over here is a CD single of the song, Tears on Tape, which is still sealed. I don't remember where I got this from. I must have ordered this online and had it imported, but I don't really fucking know. So now we're going a little bit out of order here. This is the special, special, special edition of Venus Doom, which comes in this beautiful fucking book with this excellent artwork on it. It's supposed to look fucked up. I didn't do it to this. I did not put it in this shape, you know what I'm saying? I have toyed with getting this tattooed on me for so long and I haven't quite done it yet. But when you open this up, you can flip through all of the pages. Again, gorgeous artwork in here. Some really cool photos. I believe the photos were taken by Villa himself. But as we get towards the end, there's this envelope here, which is sealed in wax with a hardogram. It's not real wax, it's plastic, but it looks like wax. <laughs> and you pop that open gently, gently. You see it ripped a little bit, but it's not my fault. And you open this up, and you've got some photos taken by Villa himself, which obviously they're reprints. These are not the, the actual photos he took. And these right here, this is the, I believe, the standard version of the album with the special edition. And right here we have the book version of Dark Light, which has this cool hardogram binding that keeps it all shut up, which I will take off slowly. Got a hardcover book there, cool memory from this. I brought this to school, uh, freshman year of high school, because we had to show a song to the class and like talk about what it was and like what it meant and everything and I used Under the Rose and there were a bunch of kids in that class who had never heard of him before 
And after I played the song, they were like, yo, who was that? That was good. And I'm like, that's the band that I'm always talking about and always wearing their shirt. So I made a couple new fans that day. So we're gonna go from CDs to records and I'm gonna try to go in order of release again to the best of my ability. This is the Wicked Game single on vinyl, on red vinyl to be exact. Greatest Love Songs, volume 666. God, it's hard to fit a whole record in the shot right now. <laughs> this is from the uh, From Lashes to Ashes, Love to Dust reissue set, as you can see on the back. Two records long, whole shitload of tracks. See the 666 in the heart, open it up, and it is marbled red and black. Just, just, just looking nice. This is a vinyl copy of Razorblade Romance. This is the, God, it's so hard to keep straight which ones are which. BMG, RCA, Terrier. There's the track list on there, which is not in the normal order. You can tell by looking at it. I think I got this at Hot Topic way back in the day. It might've been the first record I ever owned, and it is on some pretty pink vinyl. Here's another edition of Razorblade Romance on vinyl. This is the one that came in the deluxe box set from the end records. Again, there are two records in there. Beautiful artwork on both sides. And when you open it up, you've got even more beautiful artwork on both sides. When you open it, it's another version of Razorblade Romance on pink vinyl. They've done this a lot of times. Deep Shadows, Brilliant Highlights, Vinyl, The End Records. Pop it open, looking good on all sides. Pop it open, Cosmic Pope artwork, marbled gray, white, black. Love Metal, Deluxe Edition, Vinyl, Two Records, The End Records. It came in the big box set that we keep talking about over and over, which we're almost done going through the contents of that. Now here's some, here's some shit. This was marketed as a gold vinyl. Obviously it is not. The record is not gold at all. If I turn the camera towards the window just a bit, you can see it looks more like a fucking oil spill than it does anything. It's not gold at all. So what happened there, I don't know. Is anyone's version of this gold? This is a pretty cool piece of the collection. This is Dark Light Vinyl Edition. They only put this out one fucking time. I had it in a frame for a while. I actually bought it sealed on eBay for like 50 bucks years and years ago. It's worth quite a bit more than that now. There are bonus tracks. Venus in Our Blood and The Cage both didn't quite make the cut of the actual album. And Poison Heart, which is a Ramones cover, which actually fits in perfectly as a hymn song. Excuse the weird cut, but I have even more versions of these records that I have framed in my living room. So I can't quite take those out and show those to you. But here's a few. This is from the same box that we've been talking about. This is 666 Ways to Love. Him's first or second EP, depending on who you ask. Uh, that was like impossible to find. And they did us a huge favor as fans by putting that on vinyl. That is fucking awesome that they did that. That's an older version of Brave's Love Songs I have right there. It's on black vinyl. This is an older version of Razorblade Romance I have. It was one record, and that's the one that fit in the frame. That's on black vinyl as well. Don't remember which one. <sighs> Deep Shadows, I think that is from the In Love Said No box set. Love Metal, believe that's also from the In Love Said No box set. Here is XX, Two Decades of Love Metal. That's on blue vinyl. That one is actually still sealed inside of that frame. Here's a version of Tears on Tape. I think that's the clear version that I have in this frame. I have four fucking records of this, and I'll show you the other three. But that one's framed, and they're a pain in the ass to take down and put up, so I'm not gonna show you those. Here is the End Love Said No box set, the vinyl box set that I've been telling you guys about that I have displayed right here. But now let's get back to the other records. Before we get to all those copies of Tears on Tape, here is a vinyl edition of Screamworks, Love and Theory and Practice, chapters one to 13. Uh, I bought this sealed as well, and I decided to open it because I am a hymn collector and a giant hymn fan, but I did not buy these as investments. I'm not gonna keep anything sealed because I think like, oh, I could sell that later. I'm not gonna fucking sell any of these. I fucking love them, you know? So they're not going anywhere. Oh, what's up? Beautiful, gorgeous white vinyl. What are you playing? Okay, let's talk about all those copies of Tears on Tape I was telling you about on vinyl. So the one in the, in the frame out there, I think, was the clear version. So now we get to play a little bit of a guessing game here as to which edition I'm gonna open. This is the, okay. This is marketed as cream, but I call it banana dick yellow. <laughs> because I don't, like, have you guys ever put cream in your coffee? Was it this color? 
If it was, you probably got real sick. This is not cream, in my opinion. But as we go through these, I just want to point out how nicely done these inner sleeves are. And the cover of the record itself, this is all high gloss, very nicely printed. So assuming the clear one was in the frame and we already saw Banana Dick Yellow, this edition of Tears on Tape on vinyl, if I can get the fucker out, should be blue or green. This is indeed the transparent blue version. You can see it's transparent as you can see me through it right there. Uh, all of these Tears on Tape records are fucking gorgeous and they all sound great. And one last time, I believe we should have the green edition of Tears on Tape here. Do we? Yes, we do. So I call it green, but it's actually, um, it's kind of transparent. You can see me through a little bit there. Maybe when I show you in the light. Yeah, there you go. It's green, but there's actually some white marbling in there too. Kind of looks like a swamp or slimer from the Ghostbusters, if that's your shit. So now, as I put these away, you're wondering, did I really need four copies of the same record on different colors? And to that I say, yeah. This right here is a vinyl 10-inch single of The Sacrament, Volume 3. I found this at Reckless. No, I didn't. I found this at The Exchange in downtown Chicago for a pretty good price. I'm not a huge fan of 10-inchers because they sit weird on your shelf amongst the others, but what are you going to do? All those deluxe editions of those albums I was talking about came in this beast of a box set right here. This is the Lashes to Ashes, Lust to Dust vinyl retrospective box set covered 96 to 03. So that is 666 Ways to Love, which was framed earlier, all the way through Love Metal. And when we pop this fucker open, I was lucky enough to be one of the people who received a legitimately autographed uh, cover of the album art. It also came with this poster right here, which is a gigantic version of the album art, which doesn't even fit in the frame, but you know what I'm talking about. And it also came with, and this is quite funny, all the records that I showed you earlier, all those deluxe editions, it also came with the standard edition of every single one of those fucking records. So these are even more copies of Razorblade Romance that I have on vinyl, more copies of Deep Shadows, more copies of Grey's Love Song, more copies of Love Metal. Dude, I have so many of these now. And hidden in the deepest, darkest corners of this box set is this little Hardogram USB flash drive that I can hopefully nicely pop out here. And this contains all of the tracks and the bonus tracks right there. We are just about done with the records. Before we get there, I mentioned that I don't like 10 inch records because they get lost in the shuffle amongst the rest of your collection. It just took me like five minutes to find my fucking singles. <laughs> this is the Wings of a Butterfly 7-inch vinyl single, which also includes Poison Heart. Not an easy song to come by. This is the Killing Loneliness single, which includes a live version of Under the Rose. This is the Vampire Heart single, which comes on clear, glittery vinyl. Let me get it out of the case real quick. How nice is that? And if you look closely at the other side, those heartograms are etched in there, son. What are you playing? And this right here is the Kiss of Dawn vinyl single, which has the acoustic version of Love and Cold Blood on there. Definitely underrated. Love and Cold Blood acoustic, so good. That's not a crack in the record. It's supposed to look like that. Don't worry, we are reaching the end. Got a couple more doodads here, little bibs and bobs, as Villa would say. This is a little set of him rings. There were two matching rings inside there that came in this cool little uh, like Funeral of Hearts style coffin. This right here is an issue of Metal Hammer magazine. It was a very special him edition, 100% official giant door poster. That thing is fucking huge, and I'll try to show it to you. This was celebrating the release of Tears on Tape, and this thing is just him from top to bottom, so you know I had to have it. And that CD earlier, that Tears on Tape, that I was like, I don't know where the fuck this came from. I'm Now that I'm looking at this, I remember it came from right here. So this magazine also came with the CD. But let me open this up real quick. So this is the actual issue of the magazine. It's very high gloss, so it's kind of hard to show you. And you pop it open, and there are stories left and right. This one is talking about all of Villa's tattoos and what they mean. This whole magazine is really fucking cool. This right here is a quite large poster, sorry for the glare, that came with the magazine. And on the other side, you can hopefully see that it faintly says Tears on Tape at the top, 
and there's the like the spiral snake hardogram artwork and it's like what the f why does this look so weird the closer you get you can see the names of thousands literally thousands of him fans and what's so exciting is I am in here my name is on this official him poster and I'm looking for it right now so I can show it to you there I am that's me right there how fucking cool is that I know I used the word gigantic for the last poster but that kind of undersells just how big this poster is this poster is legit like six feet long it is enormous this is the Villa Vallo door poster, they called it, and the folds are making his face look real funny. When you flip that poster over, this is hymns, gods, and monsters. These are all different pieces of media and artworks that have inspired the guys, and specifically Villa, over the years. Uh, just really fucking cool stuff. So we just talked about the Metal Hammer magazine issue for Tears on Tape. This is another one! <laughs> I honestly, I don't even think that this is the same issue. I think it's a different one, but it was a, a fully him version of a magazine. I, I had to have it. So that'll do it for the Metal Hammer magazine. Nope! <laughs> this is the hardcover version, which is a beautiful black and gold limited edition pressing of the Tears on Tape issue. And man, looking at this right now, now I want to go back and uh, I want to read it again. Got a couple DVDs here. This is him, the video collection, 97 to 03. Has a lot of really cool music videos on there. Another DVD, we have him, the Love Metal Archives, volume one. There was never a volume two. <laughs> Has a lot of music videos on there. Really cool interviews, and uh, as you can see at the top, pics and stuff, so that's really fun. In my living room here, I've got some posters hung up. This is a gigantic Tears on Tape poster, which has the uh, some of the Daniel P. Carter artwork on there. We move over here past the Christmas tree. I'm filming this on December 5th. Spoilers. I've got a giant uh, Razorblade Romance poster here. And down here, that is a genuinely autographed postcard from one of the Tears on Tape box sets. That was not guaranteed either. I was just one of the lucky few that received one of those. Over here, this is one of a kind. This was from the special edition or whatever of Screamworks. This is the album artwork, but they were every single one of them. How many were there? Um, if it'll focus, there were 5,000 of these. It didn't quite focus, but I can read it in real life standing next to it. There are 5,000 of these made. They were all silkscreen printed by Villa himself and somebody else I can't remember, and they are all different colors. So the standard version of the album is like the greenish blue, and you did not know what color you were going to get. I wound up getting this gold and orangish red mix, and what's really cool is her eyes and lips are that color as well. Everybody's print of this is 100% different, and that might be my favorite piece of him memorabilia that I own. I guess including my him tattoos would make sense, right? You've seen this one, the vertical logo, as I've been going through everything. This is kind of hard to do. This is my uh, Love the Hardest Way tattoo, which was a song off of Screamworks. My aforementioned Venus Doom symbols on my left forearm. Sorry for these weird angles. I have a heartogram tattooed on my left elbow. And the second tattoo I ever got was the part on my wrist, which is also shared by Villa. I was not trying to copy his tattoos and pass it off as my own. It was more of an homage. I shouldn't forget this dust cover for my turntable that came with the Lashes to Ashes box set. That's pretty cool. And this is kind of on the periphery of what can and can't be included, but this is actually a poster of artwork for an old show I used to do. That's me on the right there, holding hands with Nosferatu. But in every one of these posters, there is a hardogram hidden somewhere because every fucking thing I do basically has a hardogram on there somewhere. So in each and every one of these posters that you see, I usually had the artist, Lydia Caranda, who is fantastic, stick a little hardogram on the lapel of the jacket. That is the majority of my hymn collection. There are definitely things that I missed here and there. I have him blankets in the closet somewhere, I've got him keychains, I've got him postcards, all sorts of shit. 
Uh, I don't know where it all is right now, but that's the big stuff. Those are, those are the big, the records, the CDs, the signed things, the posters. That's the majority of it. Um, there was always going to be something I missed, so that's okay. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, if you want to see me update my Superman collection video at some point, just let me know, and I can make that happen if enough people want to see it. Until then, I love you. I hope you had fun, and I'll see you next time.